Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So on my Instagram story recently, I asked a bunch of you guys if you had any questions about yoga, meditation, life coaching, anything. And the majority of you had questions about yoga, specifically the types of yoga and why exactly you would use or go to a class that was one type versus a different type. So in this video, I'm going to be going over a bunch of different types of yoga. These include Hatha, Vinyasa, Ashtanga, Kundalini, Restorative, Yin, and Bikram or Hot Yoga. So if you're interested in learning more about these, keep watching. first three that I want to go over are Vinyasa, Ashtanga, and Hatha. And Hatha is the typical type of yoga class that you're probably familiar with, where you're moving through positions. Sometimes it's related to breath work, sometimes it's just about the poses, but it's usually always some kind of flow and physical movement. This is great for beginners. It's super simple and easy. It's often slowed down. So if you see a class that specifically says Hatha, it's probably going to be a much more beginner friendly class than the average yoga class might be. Vinyasa on the other hand, while it is a flow, is a little bit more intense. So this is gonna be, you're gonna be typically moving with your breath. So this is you're moving in the poses between breaths. So you're inhaling into a pose and then you're exhaling, moving into the next pose. And each breath you are doing some kind of movement. And unless it's a strengthening vinyasa class where you might be holding poses for several breaths, most of the time you're gonna be moving through each pose, breath to breath to breath. And this is really great except that it can be really tricky to pick up when you're first starting because you're moving fairly quickly. So if you aren't familiar with the names of the poses and exactly how to go into the poses, it can be a little bit overwhelming at first. If you go to a really good teacher or a really good studio, a lot of times they'll slow it down for you or they'll help kind of focus on making sure you're getting into the positions right and they'll break it down or they'll have beginner classes that will do this but slower or make sure that you know what's going on. Uh, so this is definitely one that I suggest, but it might be one that you just make sure you're going to a beginner class if you aren't super comfortable with the names and types of poses in yoga. And the last of these three is Ashtanga. And this is definitely of the three the most intense. So this is gonna be most commonly you're going to be doing a set of poses so this is actually in sanskrit is the eight limb path and so in this it's a little bit more spiritual you tend to just have the choreography pretty set and so if you go to an ashtanga class you're going to be expected to know pretty much all of the poses right away and so if you're someone that wants to learn it that's awesome they do a lot of times have separate studios that really focus on this because it is kind of its own type of yoga most commonly, but it's something you can definitely learn. And if you're really passionate about yoga, it's an awesome next step if you feel really comfortable with all of the poses already, but it's definitely not one that I would suggest to jump right into if you aren't super comfortable with yoga already. So the next one I wanna talk about is Kundalini. And this one, you might have seen or heard of before, but you also might not have. And this one is definitely going to be a very intense spiritual practice as well as that physical yoga practice. So in these, they typically do a lot of chanting, a lot of meditation, and just a lot of mantras. They do some really intense breath work, and often their flows are a repetition of different types of movements to help bring the kundalini energy out of your lower spine. And that's really the goal and the focus of this. So they do a lot of chakra work and just really focused on doing poses and movements, sounds and mantras that will help get this energy out of you. 
This is an awesome practice for those who want to get a little bit more spiritual with their yoga, but it is an intense process and can be a lot to take in if you're new to it. So it's something that you should be mentally prepared for going into it and it's an incredible experience, but it can just be a lot, so be aware. And next is probably one of the most popular in recent times type of yoga. It used to be called Bikram yoga and some people still call it Bikram yoga, but most people know it as hot yoga. So this is gonna be 105 degree room, 40% humidity, super intense, and you have a structured set of poses. This is typically 26 very specific poses choreographed the same way every time. And then you go through the whole thing twice, one on each side. And that's the whole thing. So the idea is that you're cleansing the body, you're really sweating, it's a really good workout, and it's just one of the most intense but really beneficial and just awesome types of yoga. For me, it, I definitely have to be in the mood to do this one because it is one that can be really difficult and if you aren't mentally prepared to be really hot and really sweaty, it can be a lot. <coughs> Sorry. Um, can be a lot for your system, but it's definitely one that you should check out if you're interested in more of like the athletic workout side of yoga. So the last two that I want to talk about are yin and restorative. And these two are often confused and interchanged, but they actually serve very different purposes. The reason that people think they're so similar is because in both you are holding poses instead of going through a flow of poses. So you can hold your poses for, depending on if it's yin or restorative, anywhere from like two to 10 minutes. Um, sometimes if it's a more intense or more restorative yoga, you can even hold it longer. But let's just start with yin. So yin yoga is really focused on flexibility and just the ability to relax into the pose, but also to really find that edge. So you're trying to break apart the fascia that hold your muscle fibers together. And this is really beneficial because that is ultimately what's going to keep you flexible. So the more fascia you have, the tighter your muscle fibers are going to be. So as you break down that fascia, as, as you stretch and hold those poses for longer, you're going to have better luck with your flexibility and it's going to get easier and easier to go into those poses. This is also a great opportunity to meditate and to really just focus on your body and doing body scans and just kind of reconnecting your mind and your body. Whereas on the other hand, restorative yoga is instead of finding that intense edge where you're uncomfortable but not necessarily in pain, where you're trying to get that flexibility and yin, restorative yoga is actually the opposite. So you won't, don't wanna feel anything. This is super calming and super restoring for your body because so many of us often sit in chairs and we're at a desk or we're just sitting a lot all day watching TV, whatever. And so we end up hunched over and everything's real tight. And so this just helps to relax your whole body. So you use a ton of props for this. You usually have bolsters and blankets and pillows and you kind of just look like you're building forts, honestly, sometimes just because you're putting so many things around you to help support your body but it's so amazing because it just lets you release and instead of holding that tension you can just let it go and let your body just do its thing and as you let go of that tension your body can start to restore itself and so this is usually something where you hold it for five to ten minutes so you're not doing a lot of poses but you're doing very specific poses that are designed to help relax either certain parts of the body or you're doing a theme like heart openers or you're just focusing on gratitude or any other kind of more mind and meditation focused concepts because you have all of this time where you're just relaxing, you're able to kind of cleanse all the negativity out of your body and out of your mind and so it's a great opportunity to take in 
gratitude, self-love, compassion, all of those things. And so those are really common themes in this type of restorative yoga. But if you are interested in yin or restorative yoga specifically, you can check out my website, namastekristensway.com slash yoga. And I have my schedule up there and all the different classes that I offer, as well as an opportunity to go through my yoga library so you can see all the different classes that I've previously done. So if you're interested in that, go check that out. I'll have the link down below. Otherwise, I also have a Facebook page that is Namaste Kristen's Way Yoga in all caps. So if you want information about some of the yoga, the themes that I'm doing for the week for my classes, and other little random yoga videos, you can go ahead and check that Facebook page out. I will also link that down below. And thanks so much for listening, guys. If you want to learn more yoga stuff, if you want to watch some yoga videos, I'm going to be posting about those all month in August. So continue to watch out for those. You can subscribe down below and click that little notification bell. And if you felt this video was helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up so I can make more. I hope you guys have a great day and namaste. Thanks for watching.